Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Narendra Singh Chama and uh, I'm a part of group replica uh, MySQL replication and uh, I do testing on replication. So today I'll, uh, I'm going to talk about what's new in replication in MySQL uh, 8. Say Faber statement. So today's program agenda will be uh, talking about the uh, talking about the replication, different variants of replication, uh, MySQL, and why we why we need it. And then I'll be talking about the main part of our uh, presentation, which is enhancements that has been done in MySQL 8 in replications. And uh, a, a, a quick roadmap uh, in uh, in MySQL for the replication. So in today's world, it's a, techno a technology mesh. All things are distributed. And there is a large amount of data that we need to handle, transform, and store. So for example, uh, with having smartphones coming into our life, we have lo loads of data that we want to store. We want to uh, post it at everywhere. And it should, uh, it should be quickly available to everyone. So the thing is, we cannot afford any offline duration. And it's sim simply uh, unaffordable. So I want to keep my more and more data on social media. And I want to see, okay, look, look at all my pictures. And uh, when we are okay, we want all the monitor, all the data for the monitoring purpose for n number of years. And uh, with the IoT, there is much more things that we want to store. So extract, transform, and load. And that to be as soon as possible. This is the key component for us to progress in future. So it's like the zoo. And distributed coordination and monitoring is the key here. So what is replication? Replication is a process of generating and reproducing multiple copies of data at one and more site. So for example, if I do some inserts on the primary, then it goes, to, it should go to the replica uh, without any data drift. In MySQL replication, we have three different types of coordination between the servers. So the very basic ones are asynchronous replication, and some simple replication. So, MySQL replication is a, a process in which we write everything to, to the log file and then it gets replicated. So, we are using logical replication. So, here when we insert some uh, data, uh, the server A writes it in, into the binary log and also it uh, commits it in the server. So, it gets dumped over the network and it gets available in the relay log of the secondary member. And from there, the coordinator thread assigns it to uh, workers. So if there are multiple transactions which can be penalized, workers, they work on that penalty. So it improves the performance. And once it is written, if we have the log been unable on this server, then it will be uh, been logged over there as well. In semi-synchronous replication, uh, the, uh, we send acknowledgment back to the uh, primary so that we know uh, whether the slave head or secondary has received the data or not. So it, it has become related to synchronous kind of thing. Now coming to the third and the most important uh, uh, MySQL replication which has improved a lot. In the previous uh, replication setup, we might need different scripts, utilities to provide the failover and a uh, uh, lot of other activities. In group replication, it's a highly available solution. It's a very good infrastructure where the members can grow and shrink dynamically. And whatever the view, consistent view is available, the same view will be available to all the members. And we can have two different types of modes available here. One is single primary mode where only one member will be doing read-write operations where all the other members will be reading only. Whereas we can have multi-primary mode where all the members will be doing write operations and it will be uh, conflict detection and everything ha handled automatically. And with the member who is having the primary role or the secondary roles, the same information is available across the group. So let's moving on to the enhancement section. So far what we, what we have seen is in replication we transfer some data and through logical replication, it, it, it's available, it gets available to the secondary. But assume when the data packet is in motion and it has not received to the secondary yet, during that time, if someone queries it, what it will get? 
So for example, in this case, I am updating a data on server B where the value was 1, I am changing it to 5 now. So it, it is in progress at, at this point of time. It has not reached A yet. So during that time, if someone queries it, what it will get? They will get value 1. So here what we are saying, it's an eventual consistency. So it will be consistent, but eventually. Not, not uh, exactly when we are querying. So we have enforced some consistency level over here. So it is enforced on B. So for example, if the value has been updated on B, and if someone queries from server A, it will wait. The query will wait until unless it has execute. It executes on A, and this is uh, this can be said through group application consistency is equals to before. So when we say before, we are enforcing consistency on read. Similarly, assume I am writing something on server B, and I want that I should not uh, give the uh, give the handler to the client back until unless I execute it and all the members. So for example, here in B, when I am executing some uh, DML, until unless it is available on member A and member C, I will not get the commit OK. So when it's, the commit gets back to the client, now when we are querying, I will get value 5 in across the group. And we also have before and after commit consistency level. Now moving on, there is one more scenario. So assume I am I'm on a single primary board where I am executing something on member B and mean uh, during that time this member goes away and meanwhile if some client tries to query from the member, uh, member A, he should not read the stale data. So in this case when, when I say the consistency level is equal to before on primary fade over, the query will hold until unless it executes it on A. So when uh, when it executes it, I will get the value as 5. Now in the operations part, what used to happen earlier in group replication is the member which was the part of this group, in single primary mode, the member A was read only mode. The moment we used to do is to stop group replication, that member becomes offline. So when it was not a part of the group, we were able to do reads and writes over there. So which was not good because when it tries to join back, that might have, have some extra data which is not uh, which which is not supported in the group. So now when we say stop group replication, the member will remain read only. So only reads will happen, there won't be any write. So after DBA will do some changes to it to rectify it, it can join it back to the group. Now one step further. So assume network partitioning happens. So network is, network is quite unreliable. So suppose there's a, there's a network glitch due to which A gets separated from, from this group and it is unreachable to that. So during that point of time, now we have two mechanisms. One, I can say that this member should become read only and only read must uh, read operation is allowed on this and no write should happen. So for that, I can say read only, which is default as a exit state action. And if I want it to be more secure, then what I can say is I will set this value as a bot server. So that member will go, uh, will shut down automatically. So there, there won't be any read and writes from the router to, the, to this particular member. I can also increase the priority for a particular member so that when any member which goes down, the other member gets picked up, which I have selected. So for example, in this case, I have three members, member A, member B, member C. Member B is the primary. And member A and C is having a different metadata based on this one. I have decided that if suppose member B goes down, then automatically C should become a primary. So eventually, when this member goes out of the group, then C will be elected as new primary. For that, I can use this uh, variable as group replication member way and I set the values accordingly. By default, it is set to 50 for the group. This is one of the most important features that has gone in 8030, which gives us the power of selecting our primaries on the uh, when the members are online. 
So in this, uh, there is a single primary mode where V is the primary at this point of time. And as a, a dev of operations, I want that uh, let's a make, uh, let's make A as a primary. So if I set uh, using this UDF a particular member ID, so I'll be passing the uh, server UUID of server A over here. And once it is done, automatically A will become the primary. And there is a note over here that this UDF can be called from any member. And it will be the action will be taken out in the group. Similarly, similarly, if I'm on single primary mode and as a, as a DBA, I, I think that okay, no, the single primary mode is not uh, not what I want. I want multi primary mode. Then I can I can execute this UDF, and automatically all the members will become redirect. Uh, uh, they will accept redirect operations. So this is this is known as single primary to multi primary switching. Similarly, from multi-primary mode, we can uh, switch to single primary mode. And based on the lexicographical order of the server UIDs, automatically the new primary will be elected if I don't pass this memory UID. So suppose I have this ABC and I want that, okay, B should become the primary, then I should pass the server UID of it and then automatically B will be elected as new primary. So we can switch from multi-primary to single primary and it's uh, everything is online we do not have to take it offline relax member eviction so there are uh, the network partitioning network glitches it's, it's very common in uh, in real world so what happens is assume i have this group and somehow due to this glitch a server a goes out but then network partition can be a different ways. It can be a longer outage or it can be a small, small glitch which happens momentarily. So in this case, if, if I know certain situations are very common, I can set member extra timeout, so let's say 5 seconds. So for, if I say 5 seconds, the member, uh, the group will wait for 5 seconds before it joins back. And if it joins within that duration, then it will be part of the group. So I do not have to take the extra effort of bringing it back. So that's that is known as smart memory addiction and relax memory addiction. It's a monitoring part. Only I would not have much information about how much a transaction has taken time for traveling from a particular server to another server. Now I have, now I have that benefit to track each and everything. by server A and then it has propagated to server B and then from server, server B to server C. So I can find the information that from at what time the data was originated on A, what time it was originated on immediate master which is B and if I am on D, I, I might get the information, I, I will get the information of when it was generated on C. Apart from this, I will also get information then when it was received, what transaction I am executing, at what time I have received it, and then if there are any transient errors, I will get that information along with the timestamp. So I have more information uh, how data and uh, what data at what time it is traveling and how much time we are taking to execute it. And there is a file control for receiver thread, worker thread, coordinator thread, and uh, uh, worker threads. So we get all this information from PMS tables. In group replication, A, B, C are having, a, uh, let's say if we are using single primary mode or multi primary mode, uh, the, the roles of them can be a primary or can be a secondary. And they might, they can be on different versions. So now I have the st status of this complete group having the information like who is primary. So in this case, A is primary, B and C are secondaries. And A is with 5.7.20 version, whereas B and C is having 8.03 versions. So I have this information and it is consistent across the world. If I query a particular server, I get the information which is same across the world. 
from the security perspective, only what used to happen is, uh, or it's still it is. The thing is, if I'm writing something on the server, the get, uh, since we are using logical replication, it's written to the log file. Suppose if there is a person who, uh, who gets an unauthorized access to this machine, he might be able to read some information. To work on that thing, we have enabled encryption. So there is an encryption on binary log, on logging mechanism. Uh, so if I'm writing something on the server, that will be encrypted, and then uh, will be, uh, this binary log will be encrypted, and the same information when it goes to the second read, this reader logs will be encrypted too. So this is two tier of security uh, uh, protocol, where whatever the uh, data is there in the file, that is protected by the file password. And this file password is again protected by binary log encryption key. So this is two tier of uh, encryption on disk, and that helps us from any unauthorized access and uh, people will not be able to get that, extract that information. And there are many more features that has gone into my SQL 8. And it's, it, uh, if I start talking about everything, it's, it would be a very lengthy session. So what I, what I would encourage is maybe we can discuss all these things in my SQL booth. So I'll, I'll just touching upon a couple of them over here, like how we have enabled, uh, we have uh, change the default option so that highly available replication gets available to you by default. So binary logging is enabled by default. Log slayer of this, what means that uh, relay log related information gets written to the uh, written to the slave automatically and then uh, from there it, it can be written to the binary log. So that, that gets available uh, default by default. Metadata is stored in ELODB table so that it, it has become crash safe. Even after the crash, the data, uh, data is persisted in the uh, metadata is persisted in you know DB tables. Apart from that, replication the write based applied mechanism is using hash scans now. Write set extraction is on by default, which is uh, which group replication requires. Bind log expiration is set to thirty days, and server ID is set to some unique value, uh, set to value one, and it can be changed. Uh, as we as we set up, so all these value, uh, values has been changed for default so that we get highly available replication enabled. Talking about on the enhanced spells part for the monitoring purpose, threads, conditional variables, mutexes has been instrumented, and all these informations are visible in performance schema. So it, it has it is helping a lot in monitoring aspect. Apart from that, on operation sites, save point support has been added for good replication in the right side extractions. Host names are supported in the group replication whitelist. And there is a there are a few variables which has been added to control the uh, flow. There is flow control related variables and with that we, we can do throttling and uh, we can put some thresholds and utilize that uh, for flow control of the transactions in the group. Apart from that IPv6 support has been added in the for the group replication. And for, for the performance point of view, the core path has been improved between network layer and replication layer. Apart from this, there is a right set transaction, uh, build of transaction dependency has gone into right set. So for example, in the previous slide where I showed that if there are transactions which can be applied in parallel, so if there is a few, a good amount of transactions which are non-conflicting, those can be uh, parallelly applied. So we were using earlier database, then we uh, we have this logical clock, and now we have right set. So right set, what it says is, using the trans uh, that right set extraction, if I have the hashes which are not conflicting, I can execute all of them parallelly. So this has improved uh, improved head performance a lot. And apart from that, we have partial JSON update. So partial JSON update and blog and text, these are big data type. And in this, if I'm changing only a particular part of data of it, then uh, is for particular data, it's very it's wrong to transfer the whole data. So with a partial uh, JSON update, I can only uh, uh, will transfer the change data. 
So it will help in storage, reduced storage, as well as performance. So that's it on uh, this uh, announcements. And then if you want to talk uh, on length on this, maybe we can talk uh, talk in on bicycle work, and I will really help to explain more on it. So talking about the roadmap. So these these are the times uh, timestamps when this uh, uh, our important uh, releases has been launched. And 21st Jan 2019, 8.014 has been G8. And with this, you can get all the uh, cool features from what I have uh, explained so far uh, to you. And uh, you just download it and just try it out. And go. So this is something uh, we are talking about in the end goal. So think about the replication, service centerless replication and group replication. People have their, they have different use cases. They, they can have simple master and slave replication. They can have linear replication where A, B, C will be transferring data to each other. And we can also have multiple masters sending data to slave. Or even we can have a master which will be having multiple slaves for the real scalability. So you can think of any topology and even you can mix and match all those things with a group replication. So the InnoDB cluster, which uh, uh, my colleague Bala will be talking about uh, in post session, uh, post -in -session uh, uh, it, he will give you the complete glimpse over here. So I, I just give a, a basic idea about that. Is. In here, in this picture, the uh, GR provides you the high availability. And then for the read uh, scalability, asynchronous or semi-synchronous replication can be used. And MySQL shell is, can be used for provisioning, management, and the removal of any particular server in this cluster. And MySQL router helps in redirecting the reads and the writes to a particular server where we want. So and there can be one replica set or it can be extended to n number of uh, replica sets. So this gives uh, a complete picture for high reliability, disaster recovery. So just feel free to try it. So from here, uh, uh, we can uh, for the package download, we can go to this uh, link. And for the documentation, uh, MySQL documentation has been written in a very uh, uh, improved manners and repli replication related manuals has been improved uh, consistently. You can uh, always go and read from here. And blogs from engineers, uh, if you want to see the read in more technical depth, then we can refer to this blogs which are written by the engineer. It's on highability.com. Thank you, and thank you for listening to me.